So now we're going to demonstrate uh, sampling of the passive flux meter. Uh, we brought it into the lab and we're just going to kind of do a demo of uh, sampling one section. Normally you do the same procedure for all uh, four or five sections that you might have in the passive flux meter. So what we're going to do is uh, first step would be to pull the flux meter out of the sampling tube and then we'll kind of look for the interval that we want. One thing you can usually do is feel for where the uh, rubber washers are in there. And uh, you can tell where the interval is. Or when we start cutting, you'll be able to tell. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this. And I'll uh, just cut right into both the uh, red mesh that's on the outside and the uh, nylon mesh that's in the middle. Then I'm going to grab the red mesh and kind of peel it back. This is probably the easiest way to do it. You can also just cut it if it works better for you. But uh, Now I'm ready to catch all of the uh, activated carbon in a uh, bowl. And so what I'll typically do is uh, kind of use the scissors to scrape it off the center tube as I am uh, uh, cutting up the, the the sock. Now one thing right here you can see and I can feel the rubber washer that was in there during during construction. So that is uh, represents the interval that we're interested in. So we're interested in getting all the carbon from the bottom to this first rubber washer and then you typically just scrape uh, as much of that off of the sock material as you can and we end up with um, all of the activated carbon from that interval. The next step that is to homogenize that. Uh, basically, probably mix it for about uh, 15, 20 seconds, something like that. Try to uh, uh, mix it around, just like you would any kind of mixing bowl material. And now we're ready to sample. I'm going to demonstrate two types of samples that we typically take. One would be a sample where there's already uh, alcohol in there for preservation. Uh, typically we do this for the tracers that are on there. And uh, what we do is put activated carbon into the vial and in this case we're usually typ typically shooting for about uh, two centimeters of activated carbon in the bottom of the vial. Approximately there. Um, typically wipe off any excess granular carbon. The most important thing is that it's not on the rim of the vial and then uh, seal it with a Teflon cap. It's very important that these are very tight because we don't want them leaking over the uh, transport before analysis. Uh, later on we'll mix them homogenize, rotate them for sampling. The other type of sample that we might typically take is just a dry sample with no uh, alcohol or any other preservative for that matter. In this case, it's probably easiest just to uh, scrape it into there. You can still use the uh, spatula. It might help to tap it on a table a little bit. We'd like to get it pretty full and so, once again, the most important part of this is to make sure that uh, there isn't any uh, carbon on that upper rim. And uh, that looks pretty good. And put the cap on. And like the other one, I want to make sure this cap is very, very tight. And so now we've got, uh, this is a 125 mil uh, sample jar of activated carbon. Ready to ship back to the laboratory for analysis.